This is a 20-year-old Multicam MG101 CNC router. I bought it for two reasons. Reason number one is it's 3,600 pounds of steel. It is rigid. Reason number two, the linear rails are still good. They're not crunchy. Reason number three, my life was too easy. This is the Y-axis, and it is a rack and pinion drive, which is definitely not my favorite, but it'll do for now. This is the X-axis. It's running on a 10 start, one inch pitch, inch diameter lead screw, and a lead nut. Again, not my favorite. The Z-axis is not installed on the machine. This is an Acme lead screw. It's characterized by a square thread. This is Acme lead screw 20 years later. And this is what I'm replacing it with. This is called a ball screw. Why is it called a ball screw? It's because it's got balls. Ask better questions. The problem is that this screw is a lot bigger than this screw, which means we need to cut some stuff. So let's cut some stuff. I'm going to start off with a disclaimer. These counter bores in this ball nut are on the wrong side of the block for my application. What you're about to see is going to hurt me as much as it hurts you. See, we made it. Now because it's not obvious, this is the plate to which is mounted the spindle of the router. This is what rides up and down as a servo turns this ball screw. That's not too bad. This is the fixed bearing block in this ball screw assembly. Inside it are two opposed angular contact bearings. And unfortunately, this is on the wrong end, which means that this screw needs to go through this ball nut and be reinstalled from the other side. Now I know this seems pretty straightforward, but this is no ordinary screw. Proceed carelessly and you risk losing your balls. This just looks like a taped up paper tube, but it's a highly specialized tool. We can illustrate the function of this tool with a ball bearing. We all know that a ball bearing has an outer race, an inner race, and some balls. It's obvious that as soon as we remove the inner race, all of the balls are going to fall away from the outer bearing and we have ourselves a real mess. This tube follows the inner race in this analogy, or the ball screw, and prevents all of the balls from falling out of the ball nut. Now, we're free to reinsert the screw in the other direction through the ball nut. What we're looking at here is a base plate of pre-famulated amulet. What we're looking at here is the base plate of the Z-axis. This is the part of the Z-axis that doesn't move. And this is the fixed bearing for the previous screw assembly. Isn't it cute? This is the fixed bearing for the new screw assembly. And if you'll notice, it's a bit larger. Unfortunately, this new bearing needs to occupy 
the same location as this old bearing. The biggest wrinkle is that the new mounting holes have to overlap with the old mounting holes. I could simply countersink these holes down into the metal and then fill that back in with aluminum weld. However, that technique would require that I get in here and remove all of this anodizing, which sounds like a pain in the So the plan right now is to take some aluminum threaded stock and pin it into place so that it doesn't move as we're drilling and tapping the other hole. Now stand in awe as I go one step lazier and go to the hardware store to see if they have this thread in aluminum. All right, the hardware store didn't have any, so I made some. Now you've already seen a bunch of machining, so we're just gonna... <laughs> Look at that camera magic. Isn't that clever? So I've dropped this down to its final depth. That aluminum thread filled those up. You can hardly tell they're there. And I added this pin to consistently center and locate this bearing. You know, I hadn't really realized how dangerous I made this thing until I watched that gap close up for the first time. Uh, just out of sheer curiosity. Oh my god. That was frighteningly quick. <laughs> 